Prison inmate Patrick McKenna has spent 38 years of the last 40 behind bars, which is most of his adult life. 20 of those years were served on Nevada's death row. McKenna has often been called the most dangerous man in Nevada. Some compare him to the fictional Hannibal Lecter. But how did he become so infamous? George Knapp of the Channel 8 I team was allowed to interview McKenna inside the prison. He's here with the exclusive story. George. Gary and Paula, Pat McKenna was sent away to a camp for troubled kids when he was only 11. It could be argued that the experience, experiences at that camp and at another juvenile facility set him on the road to become the person he is. He makes no such excuses for himself. McKenna has done plenty to earn his reputation inside the joint, and he's done plenty to earn suspicion on the outside. These days, Patrick McKenna spends 23 hours a day alone in a cell that is tucked away deep inside the maximum security prison near Ely. Anytime he's out of his cell, large armed officers are with him. This is the first interview he's granted since being sent to Ely many years ago. McKenna explained how he came to develop a reputation as the most dangerous man in Nevada, including his status as a leader of a white supremacist prison gang. I'm retired. I'm not a member of anything. I'm a guy that has spent 38 years of his life in prison, maximum security prisons. In my early years, I was involved in prison gangs. Sometimes it's a matter of personal survival. Sometimes it's a matter of pure criminality. Back then, that's the way we lived. And I was a part of the culture. I grew up in the culture. I was raised in the penal system my whole life since I'm 12, 11 years old. Although McKenna admits to committing more than his share of crimes over the years, the incident that etched his name into the minds of Nevada lawmen was the 1979 takeover of the Las Vegas City Hall Jail Annex. McKenna and two other ringleaders, Eugene Shaw and Felix Lorenzo, took over the jail and held three officers hostage in a tense 44-hour siege. Now we got SWAT and everybody else out there waiting to come in, right? And we're in there. So it, it was a question from that point on, it was negotiating our way out of there alive. Negotiators for the police included then Sergeant Jerry Keller, then Private Attorney Stu Bell, and then KLAS News Director Bob Stodall, who had numerous face-to-face -face sessions with inmate spokesman McKenna. When things went bad, I was on the telephone with McKenna. I was talking to him. We were in the process of getting, he was committing to release one of the, uh, one of the police officers, uh, Officer Hansen, I believe. And, and I was talking to him on the phone, and all of a sudden, like nine, ten shots went off on the, on the phone. Everybody froze for a second. McKenna believes the police had cut a secret deal with the other inmates to have him disarmed. Keller says the inmates mistakenly believed the cops were coming in through a wall, and that's what prompted Shaw and Lorenzo to engage in a running gun battle. In the end, Shaw and Lorenzo were both dead. McKenna was caught dressed in the uniform of a hostage officer. He was taken out of the building naked. From that point on, his notoriety grew. He already had three life terms hanging over his head and was given another 90 years for his role in the jail incident. Inside Nevada's maximum security prison, he became a man with a reputation, and even when he got out for a brief period in 1978, he committed more violent crimes that landed him right back inside, which to McKenna was home. That was 38 years ago, and I've been right here ever since, except for a couple months in 78 or something. And then, even then, when I was out, I was doing prison work. My head was in prison, because when I got out of prison, I had things I had to do for the crew. There was money to collect. There was vengeance. I was an enforcer. There were things that needed to be done. I'm prepared to pay for the things that I've done. And I've given 38 years of my life so far to that uh, cause and been on under a sentence of death for over 20 years. So, no, I don't mean it like that. I mean it, if you do a thing, you should be prepared to take the responsibility for what may follow. If you're not, then you had no business doing it. I don't believe in a victim defense. I don't believe in whining about my situation. 
McKenna is smart enough to know that the public doesn't want to hear any complaints about how the system makes criminals do what they do. But if ever there was a case for the system helping to create a criminal, he would be its poster boy. Uh, he first went into a reform school, as I mentioned, at the age of 11. When he came out, he was on the road to criminal infamy. Tonight at 11, the personal secrets that helped to create Pat McKenna, arch criminal. We heard about the death sentence. Is there anything else hanging over his head? Yeah, he's got uh, he's got a total of 16 sentences he's serving. The death sentence, four life sentences, plus a whole bunch of other years that are tacked on for good measure. McKenna thinks that the state wants to get rid of him because it is he's an embarrassment. He had the not only the jail takeover, but the fact that he has escaped from maximum security prison twice, and the system's role itself in helping helping to create him. That part of the story tonight at 11 o'clock. Really as well. interesting. Yeah, he's nice an interesting story. guy. Thanks, George.